Well, that was a brilliant live stream, I tell you. Hey guys, Mac here, and welcome back to another episode. Guys, in today's... Oh, frickin' hell. Watch this. Hey, Hudson, what's up? How was it? Thank you, my friend. But yes, I'm kind of in the middle of a video at the moment. <laughs> You're going to be in the next video. How does that sound? Yeah, you're literally on the phone when I'm filming my GoPro. <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, can I call you back in about 25 minutes? Sure. Thanks, mate. See you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. It is so unprofessional to have my thing on. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope that all of you are doing very well and that you guys are all upright and breathing and smiling. Um, anyway, guys, today, um, over the holidays, uh, when I had my massive break over school, which was seven weeks in the end, which was flippin' awesome. I did a few renovations around the house. One and foremost was the set, which you guys have seen. But the main focus is actually my new server room. Um, down here in the house, it's getting a bit dark because I filmed this earlier, but my GoPro corrupted and I'm trying to find my keys. That's my dog, hello. Um, so I'm just trying to see if I can find my keys and I got my Apple Watch, well done, there's a review of that coming out. See if I, can f I need to find my keys, because if I don't have them, I can't actually show you the rack. Um, but anyway, the point is, I have done some renovations over the holidays, um, including a new server rack. They should be on me. Where are they? Um, see, I don't have the spare ones either. Crap. Um, did I leave them down in the rack? Uh, where did I put them? Interesting. Um, I'll be back once I find them. Actually, I think I've left them in my room. See if I can find them. Uh, no, they're not in my room. I think I left them down the rack. I'll just check that quickly. But first and foremost, losing keys, not a good start. But anyway, I hope you guys are all doing very, very well. And um, without further ado, I would like to show you guys the upgrades that I did to the uh, network. First and foremost, we have two new dedicated servers, um, and it's all on a brand new UPS. I finally spent the trigger and bought one. Ah, oh, my keys were in there. Anyway, let me show you. This here is the new server rack. Well, that's actually the same one, but all I've done is moved it. Actually, can I kill this light? <laughs> that's good. Anyway, so here we have it. This is the server room. There is a bug in there. Get out. So, let's unlock it. And as you can see here, this is my... Actually, I have to turn the light on for this. This, actually, ah, uh, yeah. This here is my brand... Well, the same server rack, but I've changed it quite a lot. So... Let's go over the changes then. First and foremost, I have a second new switch. This server was here. These two before weren't. You probably can't see it, but this is a Dell Optiplex and another Dell Optiplex. These are my two little servers that will stay on 24-7 because they're very power efficient and they only cost me like three bucks a year to run, which is very, very good. Um, that's that, but also is this big bulky thing. This is my brand new UPS. There's a three kilovolt um, UPS, and it's so flippin' powerful that it requires a 15 amp power point. That's how flickin' insane this thing is. And this will last, this, um, will last the unit for about, um, hey, let me think. This will last, the, the unit will last for about 72 minutes with a full load on it. But if it was just running the switch and maybe the router, uh, sorry, not the switch, uh, the switch, the Raspberry Pi, maybe the access point, and maybe the Optiplex, because it would run for about four hours, which I think is pretty frickin' insane. So let's go over it then. So first and foremost, the way I get the internet is again through the same method. I use my power line injector, which is here. I've got two Cat6A cables that are running into the network. One that directly goes into the switch, and then one that directly goes into my server. So essentially, I have four lines that are connected to the back of Rockwood One, which is my main server, and then they're all going into this switch here. I'm planning to use the rest of them soon. The next one that uh, we talk about is this little cable here. This is actually for the fans, which is down here. So that's for exhaust. So when it gets hot in here, I push this and it turns them on, which you guys have seen before. I can also, because this is a Wi-Fi plug, I can also turn it on from my phone anywhere around the world if I see that the temperature is rising. Because this thing has an inbuilt sensor and an inbuilt temperature monitor to know if it's getting too hot in here. The switch here, this one here is a TP-Link um, TLSG101-16D. And then this switch is freaking brilliant. For the amount that I paid, I paid very little for this, um, and it is flippin' awesome. It's not a managed switch, it's just a switch that I need, so you can't manage it or anything. It's just more there for gigabit speed, and I didn't want anything fancy, um, VLANs or anything like that. This up here is my access point. It's just a router that I've got running in an AP mode. It's 
got a Cat6 cable running into it through the switch here, and then that just goes in here and provides uh, coverage downstairs because the router is up there. So that's that one. I have a Raspberry Pi that is running just as a network monitor that monitors all of the traffic and power and everything so I can try and get some data and some analytics to understand what's really going on with this network and see if there's anything that can be improved on. The next thing I have here is a HP Pro Curves switch, which is a 2626. This only does 100 megabits. So this is more for testing with VLANs and, you know, custom links and things like that. And then it's got some SFP modules, which I um, were connected to the server here, which actually has dedicated um, SFP ports on it. Um, so that's that one on there. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that switch there. This only gets turned on when I'm playing with it, because this thing uses a chunk of power and uh, a bill got expensive in the end. Right, next thing. This here is Rockwood. Well, this is actually not even Rockwood. This is Harry Potter, as my father calls it. So again, this is my father's server. This doesn't belong to me. It used to, but I've donated it to my dad as a Christmas present. This has uh, two quart. It has two CPUs in it uh, and 36 gigabytes of RAM. And for my dad, that's more than plenty than enough. Um, these each have two terabyte hard drives in them, but they're not just normal ones. These are uh, two terabyte fire CUDAs. So I've gone from SAS to SATA. Um, and I've really noticed that there isn't much of a difference and it is a real good uh, price for the bang. So like I can get really, really two terabytes uh, would cost less than one SAS drive. So I was really happy with that. And obviously there's the power button, optical drive and all that. Down here I've just got some accessories and things like that. I've got a keyboard, mouse, um, USB extenders, but they all got to go. Lots of USBs here that run my operating system. So that's got my MDT image on it and then the uh, recovery for this server in case something goes on or it blows up. Um, I'm not sure if you can see back there, but there's the power distribution unit, so everything's plugged into that, and then that goes straight directly into the UBS. This here is Rockwood One, or Rocky for short. This is my main server. This thing has 250 gigs of RAM. It has two Intel Xeon processors in it. I think they're 22 cores each. I don't know how much they are, but super powerful, way powerful than this. Um, and this server was brilliant for when I needed it. It has dual power supplies as well as this one, and this thing is actually very power efficient for what it can do. This server down here is server 2012R2, even though it's running op uh, server 2016 on it. Um, this used to run tw uh, 2012 on it before I upgraded to 2016, um, and because, well, for the functionality of better operating systems. It does have a removable hard drive in it, which I think I've locked. No, I haven't, have I? Yeah, I have. Oh, no, I haven't. I should be able to pull it out. There it is, so I've got my hard drive here. That's for backups um, and things like that. So this server will, uh, this Optiflex will run 24 seven uh, when it's told to be turned on. So that doesn't get used too much, only when it's really needed. Down here, I'm not sure if you can see, uh, but I have a thin client here and I have a, another Optiplex. Those two stay off, but this one's more for my development work. So if I'm working on an MDT image uh, for a client or for just testing, I'll use that server. But that thin client used to be the network monitor but this Raspberry Pi took over the job. So that's the main server rack. Um, I will mention um, a few more things as well. First and foremost, this rack is overkill. These switches are overkill. Pretty much this whole entire network is overkill for what I need it for, but it's totally worth it. I run over several servers on this and it uses up 50 gigs of RAM and half the CPU cores in this. That's how much freaking power I require for what I do. Uh, with these little optiplexes I used to run, I could barely run anything on them. Probably not even the modern OS on it. So. Uh, what I do run though is the UPS requires a special adapter. Um, I've got one here. So this here is an IEC to uh, a standard three pin connector, or we call the Oz, this is an Oz PowerPoint there, plug. Um, on the back of the UPS it requires this type of connector. Um, so we've adapted it and we have three of them uh, on there. So I'm just going to close the rack. Um, close that. And we always lock it because this place we just want to try and keep it, st uh, stop people from getting access to it because in the past it has been nicked. Well, stuff has been, well, we have people come over and we don't want to be in touch because this is over thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment. Next thing, so the UPS requires 15 amps. Um, so we had to rig in a power cord for that, which we did. We had an electrician come in and put, properly install it for us. And let me demonstrate something to you. The servers haven't gone offline. The UPS is beeping um, and the load will be about uh, 72 minutes, 74 minutes, depending on what it requires. Um, so yeah, as you can see, that is a 15 amp power point, and the prong is longer, that's why it's used. Just plug that back in, so it isn't playing at me. Um, and that'll send an SMS to my phone, letting me know that it's on backup power. As you can see down here, as you can see, I've adapted the cable. I've got this little adapter here. Oh my god, it's so hard to freaking move. 
And then as you can see there, it's got that connected in there and goes straight into this power cable. Everything is labeled as well. That's the most important thing whenever building a home network is that you label everything. Very important. And then as you can see, it all goes and roots down there. And yes, I have horrible cable management, but honestly, um, I don't really tend to bother about it because no one really sees it, but um, it does need cleaning and uh, half of the equipment in here is actually gone, so that's why there's a lot of mess. That's all been painted back there, that's all been painted back there. So it wasn't actually this colour, it was another like a red sort of disgusting colour and an old 80s, so yeah. Um, we also got insulation in the house, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's actually insulation all in here. And that's what's keeping, well this room warm, but also keeping the noise out. So it does a very good job. So yes, again, as you can see, everything is perfectly labelled. It's a good system to have, and that way you can keep things organised. So again, this power line injector runs straight up into the uh, router. I'm just going to close the door, and I've got my keys in my pocket. Um, and so yeah, I also run my new equipment down here, and the TV. So the TV's rigged into the switch, which is this tiny little one here. And then I've got the DVD player, my um, PVR, and my Western Digital box all wired up into the network. Um, and the way that works is it then runs, this one will go into Plex and put the video recording straight onto Plex. That way it's on the media server, which is what is running on that server there. So that just server does stay on 24-7 and it is very power efficient, so we do like to keep it running. My dad's, not so much. Um, again, we also use, as you can see here, we've got this one here. This is another power line injector. They both work uh, with a little bit of configuration, a little bit of heebie-jeebie and things like that. So yeah, this is a pretty cool sophisticated network just in there and just there. I do like having Ethernet, but if I can, I'll try and, try and, excuse me, I'll try and wire a device in via Ethernet. However, most of the time it will be wireless. The way we wired power into the, um, the uh, server room, which is literally below me, it's there, was we ran a long cable, um, and as you can see, it went through here, through there, then I'll come down here again. So yeah, my dad and I did the actual wiring, well, not the wiring, but we fed the cable through and then we got the electrician to do the rest of it. Hello Graham, what are you doing up there? <laughs> anyway, then we tapped into this little box here. Now, for some freaking reason, before we bought this house, someone put that there. That is a 15 amp circuit that we, was originally there. We never knew it, but we knew, hang on a minute, that UPS uses 15 amp, and originally we could only wire, we thought we could only wire 10 amp in because there's a 10 amp circuit up here, which we thought we would tap into. But when we saw this, and I was like to my dad, could we use that? So I spoke to the electrician, and he's like, of course we can, because it's a 15 amp circuit that runs on a complete circuit, and all that does is power that living room. And he was like, we can wire into that. So we're very, very happy. So we have 15 amp power now that runs into the unit, which is fantastic. It hasn't tripped once, and we're super, super happy. Um, and the final thing is as well, um, the house is pretty old. It's pretty much, as you can see, the whole entire structure is stone. That's okay, um, it's purely on the outside, but in the inside it's all different walls. Um, so yeah, it does have its challenges, but we do like a challenge. And that's why we use power line. Um, it would be quite sophisticated, I'll show you, because this here is where these walls, the router is literally just up there, but to run a cable it will require us to do several holes in the ceiling, and knowing my mum, she hates cables, she hates walls, and she hates patching and things like that, so we had to do what we had to do. Plus there's insulation in there as well, just to try and keep the noise out of the study. And in there. So yeah, in the end we had to rip all of those walls out, put insulation in, put the socket in. Um, and so yeah, there was never actually a socket in there in the first place. So yeah, very, very productive, but a very, very good network setup. I do appreciate you guys watching these videos and do helping me and supporting me with these videos. If you guys could share these videos, subscribe and like, that would be kindly appreciated. If you do hit that like button, please tell me why in the comment section below and what I can do better to improve. If you guys would like to see a PC setup and my network infrastructure, please do let me know in the uh, comments below as well and do hit that like button. Anyway guys, I will catch you all in the next one. Take care. Bye for now.